All right. Hello, people, and welcome back to another episode of the No Tux Allowed podcast, which is a misnomer. We don't mean no Linux allowed. We just talk about Linux without talking about Linux. We talk about Linux, Windows, Mac OS, whatever subject we want to talk about. I'm your, uh, I'm one of the people here, Tech Zero, or Steve for short. I'm the clown. And we got our resident inside, walking encyclopedia, Josh, down here or to the right, wherever Big Pot decides to put, a, put him this time around. And we got the host, Big Pod, Mr. Uh, Hello. Don't change my mind. If you dare try to change my mind, you're gonna have a bad time. You're gonna be wrong. Of course. Well, you see, uh, Big Pod, you're al- always going to find something, some kind of flaw that Steve, in something that Steve is going to say or says that he has done. And of course, it's my job to mediate between you guys and tell you, and uh, tell Steve that ultimately Big Pod is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about something that's been making the rounds all over the interwebs, and that is Plasma 6. Take it away, Josh. Oh, Plasma 6, uh, it released recently. I don't remember exactly when it released. Uh, February 20th, 2024. Okay, so... uh... Almost two weeks ago now. Uh, so, yeah. I believe Arch Linux is already pushing Plasma 6. Uh, it's in Gen 2's testing repository, which means that we'll probably get it within about the next two weeks in the stable branch. But, you know, uh, some people like to run that unstable branch anyway. Uh, like it's that, also uh, on the uh, NixOS unstable branch. Yeah. So, uh, th- it'll be coming downstream to the stable branches there shortly. Uh, Ubuntu is not going to be updating to Plasma 6 for the next for the next release. Makes sense because that's an LTS release. Uh, it is slated for Fedora 40, which is rele- releasing in the time of soonish. Otherwise well, known as when it's ready. Yeah. Soonish. That's a good heard... estimate. <laughs> but uh, but thankfully, heard... <laughs> thankfully, if you upgrade to Fedora Rawhide, you can use Plasma 6 right now. Yes, I am using Fedora Rawhide on my laptop, and I can say uh, it's the most stable Plasma 6 experience you're ever going to have. And, uh, as of right Fed- now. As of right now. And Fedora 40 is slated to be released on April 15th, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but it's going to get delayed. Just wait. Yeah. Normal Fedora things. Normal yeah. Fedora things. Officially, of Fedora should be released uh, mid April, but when has ever Fedora released on time? Uh, two times that I remember. I don't remember the exact releases, but I just remember it releasing on time twice. And yeah. I can, I will, I will confirm one thing: that on Fedora forty, they're uh, on Fedora forty one, uh, forty. Sorry, uh, they're dropping the the XOR session for Plasma. Yeah, that's that's been the decision by the. KD, KD, Fedora KDE team. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to be fair, the guy that re- that leads the uh, KD, the uh, Fedora KDE project, uh, not like KDE the project or Fedora the project, but the guy that just package that m- manages everybody packaging Plasma applications for Fedora, uh, he has been pushing real hard uh, to get Plasma on Wayland ready for a very long time because, and- uh, you know, that's just. And. We have to be thankful for that because you know he's the reason why uh, SDDM uh, is was the last Plasma application to be using the X server, and now it supports Wayland. Uh, and who, who's that? I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, I I believe that's Neil Gampa. Oh yeah, Neil. Oh. Of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. The guy everything. The, the guy every, uh, everywhere. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, but here's the thing. You didn't hear it from me, huh? Promise me you didn't hear it from me. You're not going to tell anyone you heard it from me. But Plasma Wayland is a terrific experience. Of course, it's using Wayland. It has been for me, the guy who can't use Wayland because I use NVIDIA. 
but so far it's been stable as heck the only caveat i have is that themes are so broken on wayland that i i don't, I don't know why it's on why they're broken on wayland specifically because i thought i never thought that themes could work on one uh, compositor and not another but on wayland uh, for example when i do the right click it doesn't show me the context menu it Sometimes it shows it, sometimes it doesn't. And when it does show it, and I'm right clicking on an item that is very low uh, in the in Dolphin, it doesn't go up. It just drops and it hides half of the uh, context menu at the bottom. Interesting. I'm sure that's going to get fixed in the long run because uh, Plasma Six Plasma Six is not only a rebase from Q six five five two six, but it, uh, they did a lot of uh, rewrite rewriting within kwin itself which is the thing that actually you know draws the windows and everything if people it's don't the know compositor is. yeah it, it, it's the thing that draws the windows and, and puts them wherever you want to put want the windows to be put it's yeah. a in uh, in xorg speak it's a it's a window manager in wayland, wayland speak is comp compositor it's basically and, uh, the whole driver of the experience and I will yep. let you know. I would let. Uh, I will let you know that Kwin itself, as a package, received three updates since the release of Plasma Six. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, you're going. You're, there's going to be a lot of release. A lot of very minor looking releases that are going to be fixing a lot of things because uh, they want to make sure. Because now Plasma Six is out in the general public, so yeah. of course people are using it now, and they're and they're, they're finding for all finding bugs. all sorts of issues. Uh, testing could never even think of finding. It's growing uh, yeah. pains, growing pains. Yeah, in the show notes, we'll have a link to uh, the plasma to uh, the plasma six page on the KDE community wiki, uh, which links to all the different uh, bug trackers. And there's a uh, definitely not a small amount of bugs that were yeah. that have been filed in just the past week alone. <laughs> yep, and uh, we're already on Arch. We're on uh, plasma six dot zero dot one, and plasma dot six dot zero dot two is coming in the next two days. Uh, that said, that said, it's not a horrible experience at all. Uh, like it actually, no. you can you can uh log into a, a Plasma Six session right now and it works fairly well. And honestly, I think that Plasma Six looks better out of the box than than Plasma Five did. Yeah, uh, I I the only thing I don't quite personally agree with is that they have the panel floating by default. Uh, which if you don't know what a floating panel is, it's basically just imagine like your taskbar. Just not at the edge of your monitor. It's just slightly, slightly moved. A few pixels, up, yeah. Yeah, uh, up and off the edge of the of the monitor, like maybe a, a few pixels or, or two. If I may yeah. ask both of you who have much better taste than me, what's the point of that? I really don't get it. Uh, purely functional looks, not functional workflow. Just That's why I'm asking because I know there is no functional <laughs> point to it. But it's the no, same there's thing all as, looks. It's What's the, same the thing point? As a transparent terminal. <laughs> no, no. Here's the thing. Plasma is all about looks, less about functionality. <laughs> so it's for the risers, for the custom people who love to customize, and for the longest time, people wanted a, a floating dock to be shipped shipped with Plasma, aka Latte Dock. If anyone remembers Latte Dock, uh, so now with the floating dock. And the way they have impl uh, that, not they, but Nikolove has implemented it, uh, the developer Nikolove, he uh, made sure that it can now e be uh, much easier to turn it into an actual dock because they have an option to fit content. And now when you select that option from the context menu, it will fit the icons that you have on it, remove the... You, uh, you can remove the uh, the tr system tray, put it in a separate panel on the top, which I have done. Uh, but at the bottom, you put an empty panel. You just put the uh, the icon launcher in it, and you make it resize to fit content. And now it's a dock. And I love it that way. I've been wishing for this. Now we don't really need Latte Dock anymore, unless you really want the magnifying effect whenever you hover over an icon, which is not possible with the uh, Latte panel. I mean, uh, the KDE not panel. Yet. Not possible yet. but Not possible sure. yet. But we'll it's see what the, might what, happen. <laughs> what the future holds. But I'm going to say this. Since I'm the resident KDE Plasma guy over here, I'm not going to gush like Michael from the other podcast did. Uh, uh, 
But I'm going to say that, as Josh said, it is a much better uh, system than KDE 5 was out of the box. And it's much more stable. Like, uh, for example, SDDM, it functions now. It functions without any issue. Well, asterisk on that, because I want to mention an issue that I've never had before. That it's not an issue. It's just a mi minor annoyance where whenever I log out or reboot, SDDM just goes over the verbose output and it shows the code. You know, when you remove the quiet, <laughs> when you remove the quiet flag from uh, Grub. But I have the quiet flag in Grub there. I don't know why I still see it, but apparently it's related to my NVIDIA modules not loading correctly. That's why it's it wants to show me the error message. Yeah. Uh, what you'll want to do is is uh, if you don't want to see those error messages, you also have to set a log level because quiet by default will just will just uh, hide all the all the standard output errors that that are typically expected. But any uh or but any warnings or anything like that, it will still show. Oh, okay. I need to add yeah. that. But other than that, uh, plasma plasma six has been more stable than plasma five ever was, and specifically when I'm and I'm mentioning Wayland here because I am currently talking to, uh, appearing on video using Wayland, KDE Wayland session. And the best part of it is now they uh, they correctly load the X Wayland Plasma, uh, no, X Wayland video bridge in the background so you can share your screen on Discord without an issue. Well, that's good. I, X Wayland video bridge is newer than Plasma 6. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, I'm glad that they got it working, though. It's working wonderf uh, wonderfully. And uh, what did I want to mention other than that? Yeah, there was uh, a slight issue with uh, audio when it comes to sharing on Discord. Now you can make it work with a few flags here and there. Uh, you just you can make it work without without any issue. So Plasma 6 overall is a much more mature desktop environment than it ever was. I have a question for both of you. Since I didn't use Plasma 6, I would I would like to know if it if it does any better job of getting out of out of users way than Plasma 5 did. No, because uh, that's no, not the point of Plasma, uh, of Plasma. Functionally speaking, Plasma works no different than what it did in the last release and that's probably intentional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. because Plasma is for the customizers, yeah. ricers. Oh, I don't even know if it's for that. It's just for people that just want to tinker with things. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then it's not for me, still. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, Plasma has its audience. This is the whole thing I, wa I wanted to talk about also. Plasma, Plasma has its audience, and they're catering to that audience. It's... It's uh, they didn't create plasma to convince people to use plasma. It's they put it out there and people tried it. And whoever felt that that was the system, like me, that was the desktop environment for them, they continue to use it. But it's not our job to try to convince others to use it. We just show it to others, and if they want to try it and if they fall in love with it, great. If they don't. We're not here to, to judge them, but uh, this target audience is people like me uh, who like everything to be visual and drag and drop, very easy, very simple to do, to customize. Uh, I don't want I don't want to see people uh, like who are window manager people, like for example Brody, very very famous person on YouTube. You should check him out. He's re he's got very inf a lot of informational videos out there. But when I watched his stream, I saw that he his workflow revolves around window managers because he's used to a certain to that type of workflow, trying to use plasma and him struggling. Of course he's going to struggle because that's not his workflow. He's just doing it for the viewers, for the for the views, for, for YouTube. And to be able to be as informational as possible, because that's the point behind his videos. It's to put out as much information as uh, as he can. How can he do that without trying plasma? So he's well, doing he's it for a month. 
he's also said multiple times on like just his Wayland coverage videos alone over like the past year at this point now. He said that he was going to give Plasma Six a try uh, because uh, uh, what the one thing that the KDE project has has done is that they've really been uh, working on innovating, especially on like the Wayland portals uh, as well and uh, the Wayland portal protocols. I think that they were. I think that they actually enabled uh, pipewire screen sharing uh, using uh, the the current portal system that they're using now uh, faster than even GNOME did. I don't yeah. think that they put got it into a stable release before GNOME did, but I believe that they did implement it before GNOME. Uh, prior to that, GNOME used its own uh, uh, utility for uh, recording the screen. Yep, and they did something. Uh, they they they. They did something that surprised everyone. HDR, su HDR support right in the KDE settings. Really? Yeah. Though you do still need right kernel patches, right? Uh, not necessarily. It depends on the hardware. For AMD, I don't think so. Distro. For NVIDIA, maybe. It, it probably depends on the distro because, you know, uh, every... Yeah. All, every uh, most yeah. uh, most distributions have their own special special snowflake kernel. Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll be honest with you. There there is a difference between your Ubuntu kernel and your Pop OS kernel. Just just letting you know out there. S System seventy six compiles their own kernel for uh for Pop OS. Uh, and yeah. there's differences between like uh the the Fedora kernel and uh the Ubuntu kernel. Just like there's a there's a difference between like uh say the Arch Linux kernel and the kernel that I'm using here on Gen two. Yeah, uh, but Big Pot brought out a uh, brought out a very in interesting subject. Uh, apparently, for now, uh, to in to successfully use HDR with uh, without any issue, for the time being. Before I don't know about kernel six point eight. It's not out yet, but uh, it it's not out yet on Arch. It's in testing. Of course. But uh, what I heard was successful uh, use if you use the TKG kernel. Because yeah, I believe custom kernels do have support for HDR, but I believe may, those that are based on mainline and don't add too many stuff don't yeah. still have it because it's not in mainline. Yeah, that is that could be correct. I I need to wait for. So a I am from I am on T <clears throat> I am on TKG's the uh, TKG six point eight kernel right now, but I don't have an HDR monitor to test. So <laughs> so based on that, I believe. Also, AMD stuff wouldn't work. Nothing would work on HDR if you mm. don't have the right kernel patches because you I believe you need kernel stuff to properly communicate. And between you need the and you the need the right modules. You. Yeah, and you need the yeah, right the right modules. the right, the right uh, modules, the right kernel kernel additions. Yeah, yeah, and uh, there's also the monitor profiles option that they included. And there's a neat little thing that I never thought uh, people wanted, that I never really pushed for myself. It's the ability to change wallpapers from the settings directly, because it was never there. You had to right-click on the desktop wallpaper settings to get to that dialog before. But now yeah. that, di that, dialog, that. that dialog is in the settings. And not only that, you can set per monitor if you have multiple monitors you can set a wallpaper a different wallpaper per monitor oh yeah i actually i actually remember that from every time i used yeah. kd because kd plasma 5 let's let's yeah, be clear uh, on the name color me weird like uh kde is one of the few desktop of desktops that I, I actually just don't bother racing at all so i and uh if you've watched like any of my my personal content you'll notice that i've been using the same desktop background for four years now <laughs> You're not the I, only just, one. You're not the only one. I've been using the same wallpaper for ever since I started but, working on Zero Linux. I use but, the uh, default wallpaper I get with the yeah. distro, I get with the install, whether it be Windows, whether it be pretty, Linux. Pretty much I just do the default. Uh, I don't yeah. care. Yeah. I just, well, I just set up a wallpaper on like my window okay. manager configurations because so many window managers don't ship a default wallpaper. <laughs> I need I need the people who knew Zero Linux to forgive me for saying this because uh, people who knew Zero Linux they knew how much of a ricer I was because I had five rices in the wild that people can select between. 
I don't much. I cannot say I don't care for rising anymore because my system is currently riced, but I don't care for changing rices, modifying the rice that I like. I riced it the way I like it. I've been using it that way for three years. I don't want to modify. I've been using the lay-in theme for three years, ever since the creation of Zero Linux. So uh, I love that theme. I will forever stand by uh, behind it, and I keep contacting v Vinci Luce, the creator of uh, Layin, to ask him to beg him sometimes to update his theme to work, because that's the theme that I love. That's the theme I'm gonna stick with. And uh, and he create. He's the one who behind the um, Tela Circle Icon Pack. So the rice I'm using is a pure Vinci Luce rice. The only thing I changed was the wallpaper. So you are more into creating rices than than changing between them, essentially. Well, I no longer no I no longer create rices because I deleted all the other four rices. That's the only rice that's left. Uh, so um, I'm I no longer care for that. I just like to use my system the way it is. That rice package has been traveling with me from install to install to install. It's the same rice I'm using here. The same one I'm using on Fedora, K Rawhide KDE. The same one I'm using on uh, NixOS KDE on, on the storage system. The same one I'm using on Manjaro KDE system. It's the same rice everywhere because I don't want anything to change. It's the same one I'm using in the Zero Linux VM because there's a Zero Linux VM that survived. <laughs> but, of course. Uh, that's it. I'm no longer a ricer per se. I just like to use my system the way I like it, and it has been stable. Now, what did the Plasma 6, uh, what kind of caveats did it bring with it? Well, you can say goodbye to all the plasmoids and all the themes that you are used to. They no longer exist. They'll come back. They're coming back, but yeah. very slowly, they're uh, creating sections on, K on the KDE store for pla everything Plasma 6. So far, we got 13 themes that work with Plasma 6. That's just the global theme, not the window decoration, not the rest of it. Just the global theme. So uh, now, now KD has the same problem as, <laughs> as GNOME has every release with extensions. Well, it but with Plasma, it happens once every 10 years, whereas with GNOME, it happens once every six months. So. Yes, but um, every six <laughs> months, GNOME has a full release, while... KD has a full release every ten every years. ten years. Yeah. Yeah. So people don't have to worry about such things except once every ten years. That's if they stick to plasma for ten years. <laughs> we don't know if they're gonna stick with the plasma I, for I, ten I, years. I'm fine with this. So one, I hope one of these days one of these days plasma will introduce many features that you know might actually interest me. In the meantime, I'm more excited for the cosmic desktop than I am plasma. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm I'm uh, I'm gonna say I'm on kind of the same boat because I'm starting to get a little bit not bored, but I wanna I wanna sink my teeth into something new. Ah, uh, you're just sick and tired of uh, configuring plasma. Completely understandable. It's time for you to it's time for you to experience enlightenment. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, but uh, to summarize everything because I talked too much already. I don't want to hog the entire podcast, but uh, the uh, the thing uh, about Plasma 6 is that it is way more stable on day one than Plasma 5 was on day one. Well, yeah. <laughs> They're more mature. They're mo way I'm more mature. I'm happy for it. The Over fact that overall, I... Overall, not a bad release for such a big project. Yeah, and the fact that out of the box, we can share our screens on... Uh, Discord, that's a that that's is a good. win. That is that is that is a win in my book. And they did it, uh, and they uh, they did it before. Well, not before on GNOME, it was possible ages ago. <laughs> but I was going to say before GNOME, but no, GNOME didn't have that issue for a while. But there's GNOME forty six on uh, uh, on the back end that's coming, so uh, that. Did the same thing uh, that will be doing the same thing as Plasma with HDR. They're, they're even. I believe that they're even getting variable refresh rate uh, working. Finally, that's what I wanted. Finally, yeah. it got it got merged uh, yesterday. 
it, uh, or before yesterday, and now it's uh, at the last minute. They missed the window of the freeze, but they they were given a leniency, so it's going to come with with you know. Well, that's because th there's been a lot of people demanding for it <laughs> for so. three years, yeah. for three freaking years. <laughs> <laughs> but enough about plasma we're gonna take a short uh, uh break so, <clears throat> so this was uh, our talk currently is about kd plasma 6 now an intermission time intermission time so i want to ask you big pod sure go ahead so <clears throat> Inter in, during the intermission time, I'm going to take the liberty to ask you, uh, did you do anything constructive between the last episode and this episode? I did some semi-constructive stuff, <laughs> semi-good stuff for everybody like, but me. Uh, okay, did you install Windows? No. Okay. Mac OS? No. Oh, Linux? No, but I did okay. build a Kubernetes cluster or finalize a Kubernetes cluster. <laughs> Kubernetes cluster? What's Kubernetes? I'm I'm not familiar with that term. It's, this is an orchestrator for OCI containers. Oh, okay. Well, think, uh, uh, think about uh, Docker containers at scale. Yes, at a, base, <laughs> at a scale of hundreds of hundreds of servers. Or oh, four wonderful. in my case. <laughs> well, speaking of Docker, uh, I was fighting with Docker and DistroBox to install on Rawhide, only to discover that... You should have used Podman. It's not well, <laughs> it's I know, there. but I don't like Podman. I, I could never get used to the interface. Uh, it's the same. I, <laughs> it's the no, same. Inter no. Yeah. CLI interface is, is basically Oh, he's the talking same. about the GUI interface for Pop. Ah, oh, I, I thought you were talking about Podman yeah. Desktop. Not, no, yeah, I, we're not I, talking about Podman Desktop. But I, I don't dis touch you're... Desktop because yeah. I have I have way too much experience with Docker Desktop, and I know how it works, so I don't want to touch it. AKA, it puts everything in a VM, or at least it did last time I tested it. Oh, uh, I'm not familiar with Podman CLI, but... I was trying to install it on uh, install Docker and Distro, DistroBox on uh, raw, uh, Rawhide, only to find out that no, those are hard coded to stable releases, not Rawhide. Also that yes, well, yeah, because uh, Rawhide, to... uh, because Rawhide, the way Rawhide works uh, for the people who don't know, Rawhide is the testing uh, version of Fedora where they test everything. Yeah, it's not meant to be used on, uh, as a as a daily driver. But I am using it as a daily driver because I want everything immediately. Please tell me you're at least using an immutable distro, please. N no, no, he's no, 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 no. He, he's, uh, he's, pl he's playing it brave. I'm playing he's it playing brave. It and insane. No. So far, it has been super stable because I don't do anything except watch YouTube videos it's and It's stable chat. for now. Wait until they start working on the kernel. Yes. <laughs> Well, they have been releasing <laughs> kernel versions uh, every day. Like I, when I started using well, it, well, we yeah, were... yeah, because uh, you are getting the kernel that is hand signed by Linus <clears throat> Torvalds himself. But wait until they start working on the kernel. You will find out when they start working on the kernel because stuff will break. <laughs> well, they have it's ButterFS with with snapshots, so out of the box. Uh, oh, you actually set up snapshots? It creates snapshots on its own. Does it now? I have multiple multiple uh, profiles because it's for testing. They enable it by default. So when I boot reboot the system, uh, I see multiple entries to select from. Oh, I didn't know that they were actually doing that. Yeah, that, at least yeah. for the testing version, Rawhide. I don't know how they do it for the stable version, but no such thing as far as I know. But then again, I also use a better. Better at you, desktop. Experience. You have immutable, immutable version. <laughs> no, I don't have immutable. I, I should correct myself. I need to stop using that word, even though I do know it's incorrect for a while now. The correct term is atomic. Ah, you're or using the atomic. Yes. Well, uh, I just uh, it's a hard stuff word. With containers. It's yeah. Well, it, it's it's just doing fancy stuff with containers. That's all it is. 
Yeah, well, for the testing version, they have snapshots set up for whatever reason. I, I didn't do anything. I yeah, because it. it's testing version and it's <laughs> bra- it, it is for well, sure I'm to glad, break. I'm glad that they're doing that. Maybe maybe uh, they're doing that in Rawhide right now because they're actually looking to uh, set up a snapshotting in Fedora 4. Maybe, maybe. Mm, that that could be a thing. Probably 41. They, yeah, because they used to not do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and speaking of uh, Fedora of, uh, 41, that's when they're dropping Xorg for GNOME. Yay! Which is also fine, because, you know, uh, we we have an end-of-life su- life date for GNOME, and that is at the end-of-life for Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8. Or is it oh. 10? I, it's okay. Maybe it's well, fine. I don't mind it either now, because basically it's working uh, so far. It hasn't broken on me. Wayland, uh, the Wayland session hasn't worked, uh, hasn't broken on me, so don't have an issue with that. But yeah, that's fine. Uh, as for me, I was I was tinkering with Plasma Six on Rawhide and on Arch. It's more stable on Rawhide than it is on on Arch. Yeah, because uh, they're having a better distribution. Maybe. Maybe you have a distribution that actually cares about their packages. But besides, yes. uh, did they? And they did. So. So here's the thing with Rawhide. Rawhide ships the entire KDE stack. They don't pick and choose. They don't put certain packages before others. They ship the whole entire thing because it's made for testing. We need to test the entire stack. So maybe that's why I'm liking it because I'm not missing anything. I'm not having to reinstall anything. And people who who make... KD for Fedora actually do know what they're doing. We're yeah. continuing the plasma conversation in our intermission. <laughs> uh, well, let's uh, let's okay. That's the end of the intermission. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, I've I've got like this little mini PC here, and uh, this little mini PC is powered by an Intel. Uh, I don't even think they call them Celerons. What's what's the process skew behind below Celeron? The atoms? Yeah. Pentiums. Yeah. Or atoms, yeah. Atoms. Yeah. yeah. Atoms. Yeah. That, that's, that's what this thing has. It has an atom N I think it's an N fifty ninety five or something like that. It's really low spec. But uh I I've used KDE plasma on it and it chugs a little bit. Plasma five and plasma six. That would be a Celeron, my friend. Yeah. Oh, okay. and, and fifty ninety five is a t- Celeron. Okay, okay, it's a Celeron, but, but you know, it's still a very it's low end CPU. Capable, but uh, recently, uh, a very lightweight desktop known as LXQT released, and uh, they they they've come out with full Wayland support now. And I'm curious uh, if you guys have messed around with it lately. I have. No, I, I really <laughs> haven't. I, I know. Of it, uh, last time I used it was like what a couple of years ago, back when you had a computer that could necessitate it, <laughs> <laughs> yes, something like that. Yep, well, I have messed with it in a VM, of course. Uh, and I uh, and I'm, go- I'm going to say uh, that when you switch from the because they will in- keep including the x11 uh support. But when you between when you switch between X11 and Wayland, I didn't notice any difference. It's just using the Wayland backend. But here's the thing: there's something with their portal uh, implementation because I cannot drag and drop files onto X Wayland application. So I don't know how, what they're doing on the backend. Like we were talking earlier. Uh, some distributions opted to ship it with Kwin as a compositors, other uh, the, as the official uh, thing from uh, LXQT. It, it's Lab WC, uh, WC. So I don't know. So it's a it's a mixed bag. You don't know which distribution is going to ship what compositor. But uh, the, I was using the one shipping Kwin, a, a distribution that was shipping it with Kwin. And it feels, to me, it feels as if I was using an older version of Plasma with LXQT because, you know, LXQT is supposed I mean, to be an old version it's, it's of Plasma. Very, <laughs> it's a very stripped down desktop environment. Like, uh, you don't have a super fancy menu. You just have a menu that pop, pops open just like 
just like the days of Windows 98 and Windows XP where you yeah. hit the start button and right there's a list of applications for you. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't notice uh, much difference switching between Wayland and X11. It was just I couldn't drag and drop uh, stuff on, like, for example, meld. I'm used to opening the file uh, diff and then just dragging the two files over it. Now it just opens them in a, each file, opens each file in a separate tab instead of putting them next to each other like it used. Interesting. But uh, a good thing that's... is a lot of a lot of desktop environments are coming over to Wayland, which is good for the how to say this for the Linux Linux ecosystem uh, as it stands. It, no, it sh to me it shows that they still have a beating heart. So it's also good didn't... for Rexkitty, yeah. yeah. But in Alex, general, it's good for the whole whole and Linux ecosystem as it is because Wayland is supposed to be the next step. And if things like LXQT do not step over that next step, there is no, there is no point for it, really. Yeah, and I'm going to get a lot of flack for saying this, but 2024 is shaping up to be... Uh, the year of Wayland. Not Linux, the, but the, Wayland. The, the year of the future Wayland desktop. Of the future. <laughs> Correct. Thank you for correcting me, Josh. Thank you. I, that needed correction. Now but... we just need more more desktop uh, or more window managers slash compilators. Yeah, on that's what I was going to They're say because... And XFC. <laughs> that's also I, I mean, need. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. I think that they have like three compositor implementations right now that they're that they're still yeah. trying to like work out. I I haven't looked at them lately. It's been a while, but, but I I I am curious to see what they come up with because uh, one way or another, I know that they are going for like a WL roots base, but I don't know if they're just going to work with another compositor or if they're actually just going to go their own way. If I remember correctly, I read somewhere that next year we'll get a somewhat of an alpha. For, or beta for uh, XFCE on Wayland, or s similar to the way L uh, Mint did it with an experimental se Wayland session. Oh, so they're actually doing a beta version in XFCE. Uh, that's like the biggest. That's like the biggest progress report on XFCE in the past twenty years because you know it still looks like it's thirty years old. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It does. But back to uh, back to LXQT. LXQT feels solid, but it looks. So shitty, I cannot use it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is meant for low-end devices, after all. It's, it doesn't I mean, have it, all the all the beauties you would expect on something like yeah. KDE, which is what you clearly use. If you if you look back to the previous topic, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's meant for it's meant for like these little tiny cheap cheap uh, seven hundred dollar mini PCs. But, well, you know, these things these things work great for like home theater computers. Just saying. Uh, speaking of the day, spe that's what uh, Pi Pi uh, Raspberry Pi OS uses. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, except that they're using their own fork of the old LXDE, which yeah, uh, yeah. LXDE. Turned, which turned into LXQT after a while. Yeah. After um, yeah, but, they uh, merged together. But uh, 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 which brings me to to uh, a short uh, side question. I don't want to derail the topic too much, but uh, Josh, after the show, we need to talk about mini PCs because I need one. Okay. Just search for Intel. Well, Nooks are, have been eaten up by... Uh, Does it have to be the Nooks? <coughs> look Just for Asus Look for Nook. an Intel CPU. <laughs> yeah. Just look for an Intel CPU. Look up the model number. If if they give you the model number, just go to the Intel Arc page, and that will tell you literally everything you need to know about that mini PC. No, I yeah, need I I need something for Proxmox to be exact. Okay, then don't buy a mini PC. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you for that <laughs> clarification. Yep. But anyway, uh, because uh, because uh, you know if if you would buy a mini PC for Proxmox, it's probably going to be thermal throttling. If you buy one that's powerful enough for Proxmox. So why not just buy a tower? Because you're gonna spend, you're actually gonna spend less money on a full tower than you will a mini PC. Well, you got a yeah. point there. And but... you'll be limited on actually useful things for Proxmox. Yeah, expandability. <laughs> and True. core count and RAM count and so on. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that later. But uh, uh, to end the LXQT desktop news, 
for low end desktop, whoever has a low end laptop or desktop or mini PC, as Josh show, show, uh, talked about, uh, if you like the Qt uh, workspace workflow or whatever you want to call it, Alex Qt is your best bet because uh, it is it's amazing. You can make it look as good as Plasma Six if you put your mind to it, and you look for the themes and you look for the plasmoids and everything. But out of the box, it looks like Windows ninety eight on steroids. So use it. it, it this is the I call it the lowest end themable, customizable uh, desktop. Uh, one of the lowest end ones that you're gonna find. There are multiple ones, but this is one of the one of the good ones. So it's got a bright future ahead of it, and I'm really, really happy that they're bringing it to the future. Yeah, which I believe that LXQT. Uh, is still using Qt five and not Qt six yet? Probably. Uh, they're using Qt five. No, yeah, which... the Q... no, no, no. They're using Qt six. I just went Are to they? their GitHub. Uh, uh, they ported, uh, for example, PC Man FM to Qt six. Oh, okay. Interesting and good. Yeah, yeah. They're working on uh, porting to Qt to Qt six. So well, at least they're making pro progress in th in that regard, which. Uh, either way, if if they're still using Qt five for a lot of their applications for or Qt six, uh, they have a they have a wonderful uh appearance that they call it the uh, manager, which really just sets the theme for you, and it does a relatively good job of uh making making sure that the, that the Qt <coughs> style sheets all match. It, yeah, it's yeah. not like nearly as powerful as like Cavantum or the Plasma settings menu, but for a standalone application, it it works pretty well. It is. It does, and it's. Uh... It's a much simplified version of the Qt settings. So you just select you select what you want to apply the theme to, you apply the theme. That's it. So you have opinions on the show so far, or you just want to complain about our previous episode? Uh, don't be afraid to give us a... Don't be afraid to, uh, you know, contact us. Uh, we have an email address. It is contact at tuckspace.com. Uh, you send an email to that that will forward your email to all of us, and then uh, we may or may not uh, share share it with each other or you know we might just respond directly we'll respond in the next episode to the yeah, most in interesting the meantime, maybe uh in the meantime if you just want to shout out us individually uh we we all do have our own social media media accounts that we that we can go to you can you can find uh me specifically on Fostadon, uh with the at at symbol tenley j at fostadon.org that is a mastodon instance that i'm on or you can just go to tenleyj.com slash contact and you'll find various ways to contact me there now uh, what about you steve how do people uh, shout at you they can shout at me on either twitter or yeah i still use twitter i discovered that my twitter account was still active yesterday uh and uh or mastodon uh, at tech zero uh, at uh, zero Linux on both. So I don't have anything to show right now. It'll be set up for next time. Uh, but it fost it's fostered on at tech uh, dot org. Is it uh, forward slash uh, at tech zero and on Twitter it's at tech zero op because the at tech zero was already taken and by someone who's tweeting uh, anime shit. So <laughs> yeah. it has it had to be at op at the end. But... And I can be found on Mastodon as well. I have my own instance, so you can find me on on mastodon.bigpod.se with a username bigpod. Of course, we'll have links for all of this stuff in 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 the show notes, uh, or if you're watching on YouTube, it'll be in the description down below. And it might show up on the screen as well during the party. Uh, we'll see. Yes, maybe <laughs> we'll find out. We'll find out. So, uh, Big Pod, uh, I, I, I just checked my RSS feeds, and apparently there was a big U Blue announcement that came out lately. Do you, uh, I, I know that you're involved with that project. Uh, what the heck is going on over there? Yeah, uh, we finally have proper ISAs that actually do work. Really? Uh, yeah. you, you mean that it is not just a grub menu anymore? No, it's full offline ISAs that work in all situations. 
Oh, all no. situations? Almost all situations. Ooh. Okay. So okay, what ins- okay. what installer graphical installer do they use? Still Anaconda? Yes, still Anaconda. And in future we should be getting a new version of Anaconda, probably with Fedora 41 release. We should be getting a better version of Anaconda with much nicer user experience. Ooh. And do you uh, does uh, Ublue have testing releases like Rawhide? No, we do not support those. No. Oh. That hits me right here. Oh, I want something it's, it's, rolling. It's called colon latest. That that <laughs> still only does basically normal versions. Just uh, of, always updated. Yeah. Okay, you convinced me, Big Pod. I uh, since that laptop is useless to me, I will try. You blue. Let's say, which which one do you recommend to me? To you, since you're a KDE user, I would recommend Bazite. Yeah, but that has a lot of gaming shit. You, it's, you play video games? You're you using th- a TKG kernel. Yeah. You have no excuse. <laughs> you're going to have an F-Sync added patches then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try it. That laptop it just has a Intel integrated GPU, so I won't have any issues. Yeah. Did you drop Xorg in your versions, or did you keep Xorg? We still have Xorg for now, but once Fedora drops the support for Xorg, it's going to go on our site as well. Oh, so you apply wh- whatever happens upstream. We mainly apply. apply upstream changes to our to our, uh, our installs, except in specific cases by specific sub-projects like if one of the sub projects would decide to do something different, like keep Xorg, they they have that ability. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, because I know I'm wrong. Unless I'm not, that would be a miracle of the day. But uh, don't immutable distros anything immutable, uh, where you use RPM OS three install blah, 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 or in the case of Bazite, they have their own aliases, if I'm not mistaken, from what I saw in the stream. Uh, Doesn't every modification you do using OS3, you need to reboot? Yes, there there is technically a a way to apply while live, while the system is booted, but for most modifications, it is recommended to reboot instead of using that operation so rebooting is recommended to uh, for the safest way to for, this is for the, the most way. proper way to do things so every time we do a modification every time in, you install a package or remove a package you you need to but there was i i if i, I don't know if, I, if this is the correct information but uh, there is a way to <clears throat> Inst- uh, install packages without having to reboot like uh, what was it called? Uh, Flatpak. It's called Flatpak. No, no. I'm not talking there, about there's that. There's multiple ways to install packages on a live system. Yeah. Uh, the recommended method is using Flatpak. Yeah. Uh, or the not recommend The not recommended packet uh, method which is not recommended not because it doesn't work or because, you know, it's completely unsupported and will completely work your system. It has the potential to, though. And that's to, just to call RPM OS tree install dash dash apply dash live. Oh, yeah, that one. And if you if someone wants to install something that is not available as a flat pack, for example, terminal emulators. Uh, you can uh, install it with R- as an RPM package using RPM OS tree as normal. As normal, but you have to reboot. In yeah, every after time that you, you have to either either apply live, which does basically a diff between the new version and the, the running version and then splices them together. But that can cause problems and not succeed. Oh, okay. Okay, so uh, I think this piece of information is wrong, though, is the fact that... Uh, some packages require compilation during installation. On no, no, because they it's sh- out of Fedora because repository. it's an RPM binary repository. It's a Fedora oh, okay. repo. Okay, yeah, you're, so you're thinking Nix, 
Nix yeah. is the one that does that. Well, yeah, I've had enough Nix in my head because of Zany. Now yeah. it's like gonna explode the Nix way. Uh, <clears throat> it's fine. He's been talking to me almost as much as you. Okay, that 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 that, that makes me feel a little bit better because um, Nix this, Nix that. Uh, I'm gonna lay an egg with Nick with with the Nix flake on it <laughs> one day. So to return to Ublo Isos, if you if you wanna check them out. Uh, Look at projectbluefin.io and bezai.gg, two of the main sub projects within Universal Blue. You can or also you go to uh, their Universal page of ublue.it. Yes. I don't know how much longer that redirect is going to be there, but I still like that that URL. Yeah, it's really really good <laughs> URL. We also have a repository where you can build your own ISA if you have a custom image based on Ublu, or if you want to build one of the less supported versions like like the ones based on pure Fedora Kinoite or the silver blue and such. And when you, yeah, you when you are building... I'm going to have to dig into that because, you know, I, I, ha I have my own uh, image, image that I sort of maintain every now and then. I just like push space in like the end of the container file that way it, it keeps keep building updates. yeah keep 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 on building because you know it's just minimum viable Cody what is what is there to fix <laughs> so I, I might be digging into like the ISO thing because you know it feels a little hacky you know just to install like silver blue and then rebase to my image <laughs> and while building the ISOs does it pull the packages the latest packages while it's building it, it should it pulls the latest latest image Yes, yeah. latest image, yeah. Or uh, or if you if you speci specify like a specific version, maybe you're gonna put pull that specific version. Like I can pull, okay. Since it's based on Fedora, yeah. <clears throat> um, stay with me here. Um, if I want, if, since it's based on Fedora, can I make it pull Fedora forty one? No, we do not support Fedora forty one. Forty. No, we currently don't support Fedora 40 yet. We will be supporting it probably in uh, probably a couple of weeks, probably a week or two before uh, before the current release date of Fedora 40. Yeah, that's the rolling distro lover in me asking these questions. <laughs> but but if if you have Fedora 39 on Ublu right now, you're going to get automatic upgrade to Fedora 40 without any user intervention if you use the latest flag or latest tag, as it's properly called. Which I believe it does that by default, doesn't it? Yes, if you use yep. the latest tag, which is what what we recommend, it automatically switches between ver major versions of Fedora as soon as, they, as soon as they are available and fully released. Fully released, meaning stable. Meaning they, they have official release. Oh, which, okay. Which basically, it, it's Fedora's definition of stable, though. So there might be a couple yes. gotchas. <laughs> yeah, they still may <laughs> may break. We had some fun moments uh, during, what, the Blizzard 38 release. Yeah, uh, definitely a lot of fun. Uh, definitely some laggy gnome issues. <laughs> well, I'll I'll be uh, I'll be pulling the Bazite. Uh, of course, since I'll be what I'll be live on stream with uh, with Air Max, uh, and I will watch him and learn from him as he goes because now he's got the correct uh, guidelines to follow instead of breaking it like he did before. So now I'm gonna, I have a, I will have a stream to go back to in case I have issues or questions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I want to mention one thing. And I want to see everybody's jaw drop. If you if you use Arch install with the dash dash advanced flag, you will see, and you select your file system type, you will see NTFS as a selection. <laughs> the weirdest I didn't thing. It wasn't an advanced flag. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. But when I reported the issue up to Arch install people, the, the developer, Trox himself, he replied, well, we hid it behind the advanced flag for a reason because we don't want people to inadvertently use it. I'm like, well, why we tried it. <laughs> I'm, I told them we tried it in a VM. It will result in a message saying unknown file system type. Why did you include it? They were like, we didn't include it for the boot uh, for the boot 
uh, thing. We enabled it for the root partition. I'm like, but but permissions. He didn't reply again. <laughs> But uh, with that being said, thank you guys. That's been an awesome episode. We're getting the hang of it. Uh, with, with, the, with the exception of the uh, major... Uh, uh, I forgot the, the word. But the, the major off-topics that we had because of me. It, thank me fine. for that. <laughs> Those are fine. Yeah. But... Uh, I've had uh, an amazing episode, uh, but it's about time to shut off the lights on my end. Uh, it's already midnight. Oh my god! Uh, so uh, yeah, thank you, Josh, fine. for being here. Uh, not a problem. Thank you for being here. And, and big pod, thank you as well. And thanks both of you. That was an amazing episode. Yeah, we need to do it again like that. It was fun. And for all the listeners, uh, all the links will be in either show notes or the description down below. Of course. And uh, yeah, with that, we call it a wrap. Chicken wrap. Okay. Yep. Uh, uh, we'll see you in next episode. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>